Thomas Furlish opens the menu with the colorful eggplant and roasted pepper terrine. The top layer of the dish is a pre-cooked crust of goat cheese and custard. The main course is prepared by Eric Wadlin in Tucson. It's sunflower seed crusted salmon served on a flat enchilada with a mole ahi amarillo sauce. Dessert is prepared in Hammond, Louisiana by Christina Nicosia. It includes what she calls praline pear fromage, essentially a frozen parfait coated with ganache. The executive chef at the three-star Café des Artistes in New York City is Thomas Furlish. Born and trained in Austria, he did most of his early work in large hotels. He came to America as chef de cuisine at the restaurant Vienna 79. His appetizer this time is eggplant terrine with goat cheese. The chef begins with a goat cheese and custard. It goes into a parchment lined terrine. Okay. Jose, could I have a kitchen towel, please? Okay, thank you. The custard starts with two eggs. A cup of heavy cream. Chopped uh, fresh herbs, oregano, basil, and thyme. A little bit of rosemary also. Now, a generous amount of fresh grated pepper. And some salt. Now you're gonna mix those ingredients together. You pour it over your goat cheese. You press down a little bit on the goat cheese, whatever is sticking out. I cover that whole dish up now, so when I put it in the oven, that the paper will not brown. Also, it will keep the steam inside and help settle the custard faster. I have a dish here with water. Okay, comes up approximately two inches. Gonna put my pan in there and I'm gonna put it in a 400 degrees oven. Oven approximately 20 to 25 minutes. The sauce that will bind the terrine includes jalapeno pepper, peeled and seeded tomatoes, and roasted red pepper. We have our red wine vinegar. Okay, we got the pepper in there. Okay. We're going to put some salt in. We're going to taste the sauce anyway afterwards. So you never do the final salting in one, in, in one step. You always taste it and resalt it afterwards. Um, okay, we're going to put the top on and going to mix it. Okay. In the meantime, I have a sauteing pan here. We're going to put our shallot in there. Make sure you drain off as much uh, water as possible. Gelatin leaves will be melted over direct heat, then added. The peeled eggplant is sliced lengthwise. Both sides will be sprinkled with salt to exude some water. Then the slices are sautéed. Uh, we're ready now for assembly of the eggplant terrine. We, we have our sauteed eggplants here. We have our sauce, which we prepared for ahead of time. The roasted red peppers are here, which we're gonna layer between the eggplants. And here is that uh, custard, which we made earlier. Okay, it's, um, it's cooled down now. 
and it's uh, ready to, bo to for assembly. That custard also can be prepared uh, a day ahead. You know, if you do it the day before, there's no problem absolutely with that. Okay. The eggplant and roasted peppers are alternately layered in the tureen. A coating of tomato sauce is used with each. That uh, eggplant terrain uh, can be served as an appetizer. You can, uh, you can serve it also with uh, different uh, mi mixed greens, with arugula salad, um, with garlic bread. It would make a very nice uh, lunch main course or brunch main course. That's it. It's full now, ready for the refrigerator. Garlic is chopped. It will be included in a vegetable garnish. Okay. Um, fresh lemon juice. Okay. A little bit of olive oil. Pepper, okay. Cherry tomatoes, green beans, and Kalamata olives. Right of our vegetables here. Mix them up. Okay, here it is. Now we're gonna take the parchment paper off. So now we have our eggplant in here. Now we can garnish it with our vegetables. One of the chefs at Donna Norden's classy Café Terracotta in Tucson is Eric Wadland. He was born in Platteville, Wisconsin, and was interested in cooking early. His father owned a bakery. He apprenticed in Wisconsin, then worked in Washington, D.C. and San Diego. Here is sunflower crusted salmon. So what I'm going to make is the flat enchilada batter. Uh, I'm going to start out by using the uh, fresh masa, uh, a vegetable shortening, salt, a little bit of uh, cayenne, white wine, water, Arizona Crockett honey, which is uh, in Tempe or Chanley, Arizona, and fresh corn. Everything but the corn is combined in the mixer. Then add the corn once you get it started to mix. You can pick up the pace. And then just get it incorporated like that and you're all done. Now I'm gonna make the, uh, the mole, the mole ahi amarillo. Uh, ahi amarillo is a type of a chili. It's a Mexican chili, it's a yellow chili, as you can see right here. It's uh, yellow in appearance, it's translucent. Uh, on the heat factor, it's about a six, seven in, in spiciness. It's not real spicy, but it's not bland. If you like your spi food real spicy, add a little more to your recipe. If you like it not as spicy, just you know, trim back a little bit more. The sauce is started with onions, tomatillos, and garlic. Almonds. In a traditional uh, mole, uh, most moles have chocolate in it. Uh, the word mole just means thickened by seeds or nuts. Uh, in this case, it's almonds. Add the yellow pepper. That's how I get our yellow peppers. A 
Okay, then we're going to add the seasonings. So we're going to add the salt, which is a, uh, a tablespoon, a half a tablespoon of uh, coriander and allspice, which are these two. Fresh Mexican oregano or dried Mexican oregano, it's a whole leaf, two tablespoons. You could use fresh if you like. I find it dry actually ends up better in the sauce. And then, of course, the chili amarillos. As you can tell, it's getting a nice little brown to it now. The flavors are starting to come out. And then just add your liquid. You let this toast a little bit, you can smell the toastiness come off your herbs, your aromatics. It's a clam juice, it's the fish sauce, so I had uh, clam juice to it, uh, the white wine, and just a little bit of water to make sure it has enough liquid. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm, once it comes to a boil, after it's to a boil, you're going to refry it. And refrying is a very traditional, uh, common thing to do in moles. So this is the vegetable shortening. Uh, I'm going to start getting that hot. So it's easier to refry it. The cooked mixture is blended. It's just a little trick that saves time. And not as messy. Put the lid on. Because uh, it is hot oil. So just get your oil hot and pour right in. As the mole continues to cook, the chef prepares the salmon. The crust for the fish includes cracked sunflower seeds, yellow cornmeal, and dried lime peel. And of course, the salt. And it is a crust, so it gets a little more salt than normal. The salmon I've had soaking in buttermilk. Uh, just helps keep it real moist uh, and fresh. I just crust the one side of the salmon, which would be the, uh, the inside, not the skin side. The salmon goes into hot oil, crust side down. It doesn't take long. If the pan's getting hot, it won't take long, but you need a hot pan to get a good crust. Nice crust, nice. Then I'm just gonna finish seasoning the oven. It's a 500 degree oven, takes about five minutes. And then just flip these. The flat enchiladas are cooked on a griddle. You want them a little thick, you don't want them too thin, you don't want them like a tortilla, although it is a tortilla recipe, but you want them a little thicker than that. It's a plate, uh, take your gorditas. Lay them right in the middle of the plate. I always try to center everything, center it all. Take your sauce. If you do saucing at home, what I do is I hold the, the, the spoon like I'd hold a pencil and you have more control, like you're drawing something. Not too much sauce, put it right over the top. Uh, then next I'm gonna put chives, queso fresco, salsa, and uh, sunflower sprouts. Uh, you could use cilantro instead of the chives. You could use parsley as a garnish. The queso fresco is a fresh cheese from Mexico. Uh, if you can't find queso fresco, Parmesan cheese would work nice. A, a jack cheese would work nice, a light jack cheese, uh, or a really light white cheddar. I wouldn't get a sharp or not like that. Salsa we make here, but if you want to just buy a salsa, it works fine, like territorial. The sprouts. Uh, you can buy at any organic store or specialty store. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, oil on them just to keep them shiny. It's that one salmon right in the middle. A little bit of the queso fresco. A little bit of chives. Put the salsa in the back. You got to have a nice salsa with it. 
mix your sprouts. That's the finished product. Misha Bell, a scenic inn and restaurant at Hammond, Louisiana, features the desserts of Christina Nicosia. The talented pastry chef is very active in education and in 1999 was nominated as Educator of the Year. Her dish is praline pear fromage with spicy strawberry coulis. A simple syrup flavored with praline liqueur does double duty. The pears will soak in it and it will be used to make an Italian meringue later. The pears are peeled, quartered, and cored. We're going to reserve one pear in quarters in lemon juice. And the other pear, we're going to slice very thin slices on a mandolin. like so. Then we will take our pear quarters and our slices of pear and soak them in the praline liqueur. The fromage Bavarian begins by melting goat cheese and camembert in heavy cream. Gelatin leaves soaked in cold water are added. Vanilla is added to the base, then beaten egg yolks and sugar go in. Now we're going to fold in our egg yolk and sugar mix. Then the Italian meringue, using the hot praline flavored syrup. Once your simple syrup comes to a boil, you want to turn the egg whites up and add your hot sugar. We're going to fold them in to the remaining Bavarian mixture. Whipped cream finishes the mixture. Usually in the shop, I stick my hands in here. <laughs> Remember, you can't do that here. <laughs> Take our molds that we've already lined with some acetate. Strain off some of the pears, the thin slices. And then we're going to lay a few pieces of the pears at the bottom of the mold. I'm going to layer some more pear in there. The Bavarian parfaits are frozen. After frozen, they'll be coated with ganache, chopped chocolate pieces combined with hot cream. An interesting garnish, perhaps native to Louisiana. 
strawberry puree and sugar flavored with hot red pepper sauce. After the chocolate is set, the parfait is presented on a cookie. A melted chocolate design is filled in with the spicy strawberry coulis, then fanned pear and strawberry complete the plate. 